the fiancé of my mom Essa my 14-year-old sister. Names have been changed to protect privacy for now. Kyle and my mom have been together for about four years now. For the past one or two years or so, he's been acting horrible towards her and treating her like dirt. Insulting her, blaming her for everything, expecting her to do everything for him, etc. He never shows this in front of us kids, always when they're in their room or via texts and stuff. He's gotten mad at her to the point of putting a dent in the wall. It's a very verbally and mentally abusive relationship with my mom, and she honestly doesn't deserve someone treating her like that. She honestly tries her best for us. As of late, Kyle has started to treat Jane, my 14-year-old sister, very nicely. Even though we have money issues, he's going out and buying stuff for her all the time. My mom has been suspicious of what my sister has been up to for a while and has been using the fact that she doesn't sign out of Facebook on my mom's work laptop as an opportunity to check her messages. Recently, she found some really disturbing things between Kyle and my sister. They call each other my love, secret lover, babe, etc. Kyle says that he enjoys the time spent with Jane, including the esque shul stuff. She's been spending a lot of time in Kyle and my mom's room, but only when mom isn't home. On top of this, my grandma found a couple sealed digital pregnancy tests in Jane's drawer while cleaning her room a bit since she has gone at our dad's during most weekends. On top of this, my mom had found a couple of SX toys hidden by her bed, with the original boxes, as well as a passage from a play where a father and daughter seem to get married. The only source of the toys that I can think of is Kyle, considering friends giving each other SX toys is not within my knowledge. All of this is honestly making me feel sick. It's hard to believe it. But I honestly believe that Kyle and my sister are doing sexual stuff or just effing at this point. It's been hard on both my mom and me, and I really don't know what to do about it. We've discussed setting up a hidden camera in their room in order to see if anything happens between them, but we're still unsure. I feel that we need more evidence if we want to move forward with this legally. I need your guys' thoughts and help through this. I don't really know what the best course of action is for something like this. Edit for clarity. My sister is the one initiating. She wants whatever is happening and we know this isn't okay. My mom and my grandma are all aware of what's going on. Edit 2. We do not have solid evidence yet that they have had SX or anything like that. Also, the hidden camera would be set up in my mom and Kyle's room, not in Jane's room. Update. The last post was kind of a jumbled mess of emotions, and my opinion on the matter has changed, so I will give a new summary here. Also, for clarity, I am 17 and live in the United States, specifically Florida. For the past few months, my mom has become increasingly suspicious of what my sister has been up to. Multiple factors prompted this, but she ended up reading through the Facebook DMs between her fiancé. Kyle and Jane discussed how they had done sexual things, supposedly relating to roleplay and called each other names such as Love, Secret Love, and Babe, Baby. Jane and Kyle frequently spent time alone together in either Jane's or Kyle's room when nobody else was home. This made my mom a bit concerned, and she started looking for more. In Jane's room, there were two digital pregnancy tests and two SX toys. She has no income and no way to buy stuff on her own, so the only way she could have gotten those things was through Kyle. My mom decides to confront them both about it, and they defend themselves by saying that the pet names were just a part of roleplay as my sister does a lot of online roleplay, and she asked for the toys and birth control. Kyle wanted to be a cool dad, so he bought them for her without asking my mom or even saying anything about it. They talk it out, and my mom believes Kyle since he was bawling, something he's never done in their four years together. They were both let go without any punishment. Everything seems fine and dandy. I still had my doubts about it tying up that nicely, but my mom told me to just accept that it was going to be that way, and there's nothing to worry about. Fast forward three days to today. My mom asked me to let her use an old phone of mine in order to set up a hidden audio recorder in her room to record what they did while we went out to the store as a peace of mind thing. I oblige, interested to see if there's still anything going on, but at this point I doubted it and didn't pay it much attention. We leave for about an hour, and when we get back, my mom retrieves the audio recorder. They were still in Kyle's and my mom's rooms. I take the phone out to the patio and start listening, jumping to random spots. At about 20 minutes into the recording, I hear my sister moaning, and I immediately feel my stomach sink. I felt sick. I stop the recording and call my mom outside. I give her the phone and she goes inside the bathroom to listen to the full thing so she isn't questioned, start to finish. About half an hour later, as I'm sitting outside on the patio, I can hear my mom screaming at Kyle. I knew the fighting had started, and my shaking still hadn't gone away. Kyle opens the door to the bathroom only to find my mom having a complete meltdown at him, and he's standing there trying to defend himself. Jane and my other younger sister were standing outside the bathroom. 
I immediately told both of them to go to their rooms and get my phone out, ready to call 911. After what seemed to be a whole half hour of my mom screaming at Kyle, and him meekly trying to defend himself, the door opens, and I watch them walk to their room. Following that, I go into Jane's room and demand why she did it. She just gave me a bored expression and said, I'm a effing idiot. I started just asking so many questions, asking what she was thinking. My voice broke, and I couldn't help but let tears flow. My trust in her was broken. She had lied straight to my face just three days ago about this exact thing. She just looked at me blankly, like she couldn't figure out why I was so upset. I managed to glean from her the following things. She admitted to having SX with him. She wasn't pregnant. She was the initiator. She wanted out of the house. I left her room and began to have a mental breakdown of my own. It was too much, and I couldn't handle it all at once. Screaming and crying, it felt awful. An hour or two passes, and my mom comes to tell me what was going on. She learned that Kyle and Jane had been fooling around for close to a month now and that they had had SX. I asked her why she didn't call the cops immediately and get him arrested. And she responded with something similar to this. I remember being 14. Jane has a lot of hormones. Kyle has the mentality of a child and is too weak to say no to whatever Jane wants. One of my friends, who was 21 years old, was in love with a 14-year-old girl. They had plans to get married, and his life was ruined when it was found out that they were having SX. He wasn't able to ever go anywhere there were kids, and his life was awful. I wouldn't wish a life like that even on my worst enemy. Of course, after hearing that, I started telling her that he still essa her, and she responded by saying, he did not force her. It's not essa. I try to tell her that it's still statutory essa by law, but she doesn't want to hear about it. I said that I don't have a say in the matter. This legitimately pissed me off, but I had no choice but to accept what she was saying. I don't really accept it still, and I never will. I will loathe Kyle for the rest of my life and will always wish the worst for him. She also made me agree to tell literally nobody about this, as again, it wasn't a matter involving me. She also said that the reason he was staying there was that he could go and end himself if he leaves today, and I don't want that on my hands. So here I am, listening to my mom defend the person who essa her daughter, and I'm not supposed to tell anyone. That's bullshit. At this point, I'm seriously debating just saying F you and calling the cops or whoever to come have him arrested. I abhor having to sit here and wait while my emotionally and mentally unstable mother makes decisions that affect the whole family. Oh, by the way, she said that she still loves the effer. Loves. Personally, I don't understand how you could ever love somebody who does that to your daughter. It doesn't make any sense at all. I'm worried that I might lose my mom's trust in me if I do anything though. I don't want to turn on her. So, people of Reddit, what should I do? I have a pretty good idea, but I want all of your guys' opinions. A small edit, my mother has banned them from being alone in the same room together. They are no longer allowed to message each other either. Final update. A lot has happened in the past few days, and I'll try to explain what I can. On Thursday last week, I decided to tell my stepfather about the situation. He made the right call and contacted DCF while I was at work, and they sent a social worker over. Once my shift was finished, I went outside to wait for my mom. At this point, I didn't know a social worker was at the house and was curious why she was taking so long. After about 10 minutes, she pulls up really fast in the parking spot, almost hitting me. I get up quickly, and she tells my 12-year-old sister to stay in the car. She starts walking towards me and asks, what the F were you thinking? From then on, all I heard was just a flurry of insults from my mother as she described how horrible of a person I was and how I was going to ruin their lives. She personally blamed me for all of the upcoming hardships they were going to have and for how I would likely be the cause of Kyle's self-harm. She tells me I'm not going to tell the social worker anything at all. A few minutes later, Kyle starts texting my mom, apparently saying his goodbyes. I didn't know this at the time, but apparently he's had a gun with bullets all this time. My mom starts breaking down and tries to text and call him, but she gets no response. She got in the car and started slamming her head against the steering wheel, ask, what the F is wrong with you? And how could you do this to us? She then blames me for his unalive and yells at me, get the F in the car. By the point, my 12-year-old sister is crying, and I'm frozen in fear and oblige. The ride home, which normally takes 10 minutes, took closer to 5. She was speeding and driving erratically, continuing to berate me the entire way home. She states that she has nothing to live for now, and she should just unalive herself too. This just makes my sister bawl, and she starts begging my mom not to do it. About halfway, I assume she got a text from Kyle, started calming down, and told my sister to wipe away her tears for the social worker. I was texting my dad the whole time and relaying information to him, all the while he was on the phone with the social worker. We pull up to my house, and I see the social worker's car parked on the driveway. As we pull in, 
my mom makes me promise not to say anything and to play dumb. I make the promise, knowing full well that I'm going to break it in the next minute. The social worker tells me that she received a report that asked Shuela use had occurred at the house. I start telling her the story, but she then tells me to wait, as she requested a police officer to come on scene and she doesn't want me repeating myself. Once he shows up, I tell both of them what happened, and I see more cops arriving on scene. I tell them that Kyle has a gun with ammo, who resides in the house, and we're there so they can get everyone out safely. Once they get things going, I ask if I can be taken away from the house while this happens to talk more with the social worker, and she obliges, taking me down the road in her car. I give her the full story, and she reassures me that it was the right thing to do and that it was brave. A couple of police officers also come by the car and tell me the same thing. A couple hours later, a detective arrives at the scene and brings me into his car to record my explanation of the entire situation. I swear under oath that everything I say is true and goes smoothly. I also provide them with the pictures I've taken of the evidence and let them know that the phone with the audio is inside. Later that night, the cops start bringing our backpacks which are then filled with clothes to the social worker's car. Not too long after that, my dad pulls up with his wife in their car. He said he was proud of me for what I'd done. My sisters are also released to us, and we are told to meet up at a nearby gas station for more questioning. The night lasts a long time. By the time we got done with all the questions, it was around 5 a.m., and I got some much-needed sleep at my dad's house. As of right now, my sisters and I are finishing our last week of school, and we're living with our dad until further notice. There is a legal no-contact order for two weeks between us and our mom and Kyle, or any second or third parties. We are safe, and I'm glad for that fact. The court should be making a decision soon, and we should be going to grab our things later on. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoy listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.